Hello guys and welcome back to the series of Surfset how-to videos. In this series I'm going to show you every part of Surfset, every feature and how to use it. This video will be about website analysis. Website analysis in Surfset is separated in two different categories. You can analyze domains and you can analyze URLs. To analyze a domain you have to enter a domain address here and to analyze URL you have to paste a link to URL into the Surfset search bar. Surfset will then automatically define which you've entered and will show you information about the domain or URL. Let's start with analyzing a domain. I'm going to use PHP for the video because they rank for enough keywords and I will be able to show you every part of Surfset domain analysis with this website. Every domain analysis starts with an overview page where you have the basic information about the website. At the top here we have four main metrics, the visibility, search engine traffic, organic keywords and the number of keywords in PPC. You can click on this block and you will get down to the visibility graphic here. Visibility is the metric that accounts for a number of keywords a website ranks for, search volume of those keywords and the position the website has for those keywords. So the higher rank for more keywords with higher search volume, the higher your visibility gets. On this graph you can see how the visibility of a website is changing over time and see if it's growing or dropping. For most smaller websites visibility will be close to zero. If you have a small local website which ranks for like 50 keywords or something like that, that is not a problem. You don't have to compare your visibility to visibilities of websites like BHP Photo Video. You have to compare your visibility to visibility of similar websites. For example, if you have a local website about pizza delivery, you have to compare your visibility to websites related to your local pizza delivery. Now let's get to the next one, search engine traffic. This metric shows you the maximum possible number of traffic you can get from all of the keywords you rank for currently. For example, if you see that BHP Photo Video ranks for a BH Photo at the first place and it has a search volume of 135,000, it means that it can get a maximum of 135,000 visitors per month from this keyword. So the search engine traffic is the sum of these numbers. It is affected by the position of the keyword and CTR. So for example, if BHP Photo Video ranks fifth for a keyword with a similar search volume, the search engine traffic it gets from that keyword will be less. It doesn't show you the real search engine traffic you will get, it's just an approximate number to show you if the project is growing or dropping. Next block here is the organic keywords, the number of keywords for which website ranks in top 100 of Google. You can click here to expand the list of keywords and see all of the keywords you rank for, or you can click here. This is how that list of keywords looks like. It starts with the keywords for which website ranks at the highest positions with the highest search volumes. At the top here you can see how many keywords the website has in its semantics in other regions. For example, it ranks for 1.3 million from our database in the United States and for 300,000 keywords from our United Kingdom database. Some of the metrics here in the list are the keyword itself, uh, the special elements and sorbs that show up when you enter a keyword such as photo, maps and so on. Then the position of a domain for a keyword, search volume, cost per click, competition in Google AdWords, number of results and which URL of the website ranks for that certain keyword. In the positions you have special marks here. New means that this keyword was added to our database recently or website have started ranking for this keyword recently. The green arrow means that the website has improved its position for a keyword. And the red arrow and the number means that the domain has lost its position for a keyword and it shows how many positions it lost since we last checked. Now let's get back to the overview page. The fourth block here is the keywords that the website is using in PPC. This one is best to use for competitor analysis so you can see what keywords your competitors use in ads and compare that to your own PPC campaigns. If you click on this list you'll get pretty much the same list that you get with organic keywords. The main difference here is we show you what page is advertised with that keyword instead of what page ranks for a keyword and we show you how the snippet looks like for the page. So you can check out the description your competitors use in PPC campaigns and what pages they use to target different keywords. Well, let's get back to the overview page. Right here we have keyword position distribution graph which shows you how many keywords the main ranks for on first position, second to third, fourth to fifth and so on. For most websites keyword position distribution graph looks like this. So if the graph for your keyword position distribution looks like this, it's all good. Right next to keyword position distribution graph we have a list of subdomains. As you may know Google sees subdomains as separate websites so if you're analyzing a competitor you may want to go ahead and check out the subdomain separately. For example you see here that subdomain static.bhpphotovideo.com ranks for 43,000 keywords in addition to what bhpphotovideo.com ranks for. Subdomain analysis looks similar to domain analysis. You can see what keywords it ranks for, you can see keyword position distribution, so it's a limited version of domain analysis. Below this graph and a list of subdomains we have a visibility trend which I have already shown you. Then we have keyword trend. 
keywords trend show you how the number of keywords for which a website ranks is changing over time. So you can see if the number of keywords you're ranking for is growing or dropping. These are the keywords for which website ranks in top 100 results of Google. Next, we have the list of pages with highest visibility or the list of pages which rank for the highest number of keywords. This is self-explanatory. You can check out which page is ranked for the most number of keywords on the website. If it's your competitor, you can go ahead and analyze those pages and see if you can copy them. Then we have a list of competitors in organic search. This list is created by comparing the main analysis for different websites. The closest competitors are the ones that have the closest number of keywords to your website and the closest number of common keywords. For example, if your website ranks for 10,000 keywords and you have all of them in common with Amazon.com, but Amazon ranks for tens of millions of keywords, Amazon will not be your closest competitor. Your closest competitor may be a website which ranks for 6,000 keywords and has 5,000 keywords with you in common because you are a lot closer to that website than you are to Amazon. Here you can see the number of all keywords and here you can see the number of common keywords. As I mentioned before, you can see that Amazon.com has 1 million keywords in common with PHP Photo Video, but it's not at the top of the list because it has 46 million keywords in its database compared to PHP Photo Video's 1.2 million. To simplify this, we have created the relevance matrix, which shows you how relevant a website is to your website. And here you can compare the visibilities of the websites in the list of your competitors. Below you have a bubble graph, which shows you how close certain competitors are to your website. At the top right corner will be the website you're analyzing, and the distance between the website and competitor you're analyzing will identify how close it is of a competitor. Next we have a list of competitors in ads, which works similar to the previous list. It compares the number of keywords you use in the advertisement, to the number of keywords other websites use and checks what keywords you have in common that you use in PPC campaigns. Then you have the graph of how many keywords your competitors use in PPC and you have as examples for the website you're analyzing. So the same snippets you can see in the list of PPC keywords. And you have information about the backlinks, the general one. I will show you how to work with backlink analysis tool closer in the next videos, so don't miss those. And you have information from Rank Tracker and Site Audit. I didn't start this for BHP Photo Video yet. I'll show you how to work with this in the next videos as well. But for now, let's move on. We've done with the overview, and then we have this menu on the left. It has SEO research, PPC research, batch analysis, infographics, and then we have URL analysis. I will show you every part of the main analysis here. Let's start with SEO research. The first menu in SEO research is positions. Positions shows you the list of keywords you rank for. I've shown you this list before and explained what data you get from it. Now let me show you how to work with filters. Filters is a very important part of a list because you can get just the keywords you are looking for. Let me show you how they work. For example, I want just to check the keywords for the search volume from 1000 searches a month to 5000 searches a month. And I want just to see the keywords for which mine the main ranks between 11th and 20th position of Google which is the second page. So by applying these filters, I will adjust the keywords for which phpphotovideo.com ranks on the second page of Google, and those keywords have a search volume between 1000 and 5000. Let's apply the filter and see what we got. And here's the results we have. We have a list of around 3000 keywords for which phpphotovideo ranks on the second page of Google, with search volumes from uh, 1000 to 5000. Now let me show you what other filters are and what they mean. So cost per click will filter by the cost per click for a keyword. Number of results will filter by the results found by Google. You can see them in this column here. Competition level is for competition in Google AdWords. So you can find just the keywords with lower competition in PPC campaigns. Then you can set a certain number of words in a keyword. For example, you're looking just for long keywords and you want keywords with at least five words in them. Then you can filter by special elements and SORPs. For example, you can just get the keywords which return images then you can filter by toponyms. You can include or exclude keywords that contain a certain location name, such as city or country. You can filter by misspelled keywords. You can exclude them from your list or, or see just the misspelled keywords. Here's how it looks like. So you can check if any of these misspelled keywords may be of use. Uh, and if not, you can just exclude them from your list. Then you have filter for duplicated positions. Duplicated positions appear when your website ranks for the same keyword twice. You can see them in the list here marked with a star. The star means that there is another page on the website which also ranked for this keyword at a higher position. So you can exclude these keywords from your list as well if you don't want to compete with your own pages. Then you have the keywords filter. 
you can set the parameters so the list of keywords include just the keywords which contain certain words. For example, if you're interested just with keywords related to cameras, you can enter a word camera there and get a list of keywords about cameras. And the last one is URL. This is where you can set the filter to show just the keywords for which a certain URL of your website ranks or a certain category. For example, you can use this URL, paste it here and remove everything behind the product and you will get just the keywords for which the pages in this category rank. Once you found just the keywords you are looking for, you can export your report. You can export them in seven different formats. Uh, once your report is generated, you will receive an email, you will receive a pop-up and you'll be able to access it here. Let's go to the next item on our list, the competitors menu. This is where you get the same information I showed you in the overview page. You can export it here as well. You can customize the list of competitors to compare your visibility to certain websites. Moving on next, domain versus domain. This is where you can compare your domain and its parameters to other domains. You can choose domains from the list here or you can enter them manually. You can analyze up to three domains at once. So let's check out these two. This is how the domain comparison results look like. And let me explain what data you see here. First of all, you have the graph of intersection with domains. Uh, PHP for the video is the biggest one because it has the largest number of keywords in its thematics, so it ranks for the highest number of keywords. Intersections are obviously the keywords it has in common with other websites. In the middle, you have the keywords all of the websites have in common. Below the graph, you have a list of these keywords they all have in common with information about position, which website ranks higher, and so on and so forth. The most interesting part here are the keywords for which your competitors rank, but you don't rank. You can find them here listed as adorama.com and dpreview.com keywords without BHP photo video. There are more than 2000 keywords these websites have in common that are missing from BHP photo video. So if BHP photo video is your website, you may want to go ahead and check out those keywords. By clicking here, you will create a report below instead of the one you had before. And here it is. Now we have a list of keywords for which these two websites rank without keywords present in BHP photo video semantics. Let's move on to subdomains. I have shown you this before in the overview. It has the same information you saw there. The only difference is if a website has a lot of subdomains, you will see a full list here. And if you want to analyze a subdomain, just click here and you'll get the same information I shown you before when we were looking at the overview page. Let's move on to the top pages. Top pages is one of the frequently used features. I have shown you them in the overview as well. You get the list of pages which rank for the highest number of keywords. When you're analyzing competitors, this is the report I recommend checking out first. You can get some ideas for your pages. You can see that they have a certain page that draws a lot of traffic or ranks for a lot of keywords. And if you don't have anything similar, you can go ahead and copy their tactics and create similar content for your users. So when you're analyzing competitors, make sure to check out this report. You have simple information here, the number of keywords for which your page ranks, number of Facebook shares, LinkedIn shares, Google Plus shares and potential traffic. Potential traffic is the maximum possible number of traffic a page can get from the keywords it ranks for. So sometimes the pages with the highest number of keywords won't have the highest potential traffic because the page can rank for less keywords, but those keywords will have a higher search volume. As you can see here, the main page ranks for less keywords, but has higher potential traffic. Next report is Tree View. Tree View is another feature that our users love. It basically creates a semantic map for a website for you. What I mean is it shows you what URLs of the website rank for which keywords and on which positions. You have filters here as well, which are insanely useful. My favorite one again is the main position for a keyword. For example, if it's my website, I'll go ahead and uh, use the same one. I will use the filter to see which keywords my domain ranks for on the second page of Google. So these are the keywords I rank for on 11th to 20th position. And I can see which URL ranks for that keyword. For example, I see that this URL ranks for these five keywords on the second page of Google, and I know which keywords to target on with those pages. And you can analyze your competitor's website and get semantic structure of the website. You can see what keywords they target with different pages, what pages rank for which keywords and what positions, and many more. So this is insanely useful report for competitor analysis and for your own website analysis. Next on the list is PPC research menu. Let's start with the keywords. Here we have a list of keywords we use in PPC campaigns. I have shown this list in overview, uh, nothing new here. You have information about search volume, cost per click, what keywords is used in ads, and what pages are used to target that keyword. In the competitors menu, we have again the same information I've shown you before in the overview page. Just a list of websites which use similar keywords in PPC campaigns and the ones you compete with. Next report is the main versus the main PPC research. It will look the same as the one you saw in SEO research, the difference being instead of using keywords for which the main ranks organically, we'll be using keywords which are used in ads. In ads examples, you will see what pages are used to target certain keywords. 
This report is different from keywords report because here you have the page as the main subject. So you have the page and then you have a list of keywords which that page is targeting. So it's more grouped and you can analyze your competitors' PPC campaigns more thoroughly. And in ads research, you will see even more grouped information about PPC campaigns of your competitors. Next on our menu is batch analysis. Batch analysis allows you to compare up to 200 domains at once for certain parameters. For example, we can compare BHP photo video and we can add Amazon.com and newag.com up to 200 domains at once. And I want to compare these three websites for the following parameters. I'm interested in visibility and number of keywords. And I'm interested in Google United States and Google United Kingdom. Once I click Get Data button, I will get the report on these three websites and their parameters. This feature is useful if you're analyzing a lot of competitors. So if you want to analyze up to 200 websites, go and use Batch Analysis. And the last feature in Domain Analysis is Infographics. Infographics is a simplified version of Overview Report that also looks better. You can just browse it and see the information about your domain in this format, or you can save it as an image. This feature is useful for those who work with clients' websites because you can create reports for clients that will look something like this. So that's it about Domain Analysis. In our next video, you can learn about URL Analysis more. So if you are interested in URL Analysis, don't skip the next video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.